As the month of August comes to a close, the final AVP Gold Series Tournament of the year is right around the corner. And with only a week and a half of rest between the Manhattan Beach Open and the Chicago Championships, athletes start arriving with plenty of time to get ready for their final chance at an AVP Championship this season. For Zana Muno, she's about to play with her third partner in three tournaments and someone who she's never played with before. Yeah, it's been really hard. I think after Manhattan, I like kind of lost my SHIT. Obviously, I wanted to put on my best performance, essentially. It's like all my family, all my friends. Um, such a fun, like, historic tournament, and I don't feel like I did that, so that was a pretty big disappointment um, for me. I think I have to keep in mind the circumstances, but I was still really disappointed in how that went. But a new partner this week, and I'm, like, really, really looking forward to it. It's like Kelly and I have been planning to play in this for, like, 10 days, so that's a record in the last, like, few weeks. So. I'm excited and I feel like a little bit more grooved for this one than I have the past two. So Kelly, I've only practiced with her a couple of times and I've like been blown away. She's such an incredible blocker. She is like such a gnarly worker. She works her butt off. She's so sweet. I'm like, I feel kind of honored to play with her to be honest. So I think there's like a little bit of validation in that I like kind of feel like I'm doing something right if she wants to play with me because she's really good and I like she has the experience, she has like all the international, the AVP, she has a win on the tour. So I'm like really excited and I think it's a great step for my future. Um, and I just like want to get after it with her. The New Orleans Athlete of the Year, Kristen Nuss. Coming out of Seward, Ball, South Dakota. Let me hear it loud and proud for Taryn Close. And he is now a four-time Olympian, Jake Spiker Gill. First up, this way out of UCLA, let me hear it for Zion Muno. This is AVP Uncovered. After a standout showing in Atlanta and an exciting yet disappointing Manhattan Beach, Zana's learning firsthand in Chicago that life as a top pro involves more than just winning matches. So we got to go to the Wilson headquarters today, which was fun, and they're like my big, my first big sponsor, so that like is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Here's my shot. Went to their headquarters, checked out their offices. And then we got to go on a shopping spree, which is like my favorite thing in the world because I love shopping and it was free, so it was like a win-win. Eddie the Eagle, I need you to, nope. Well, optics only, please. All right. Um, we got cool things. This is a Wilson top. Um, and they're really like pushing apparel, which is like so cool because I love clothes. I love to express myself with clothes. Um, so not only is it like my passion for volleyball, but they're also pushing that side of things, which is, so exciting and I, I think it's just like a name people have heard of so it's like for me to be able to say like I'm a part of that team I feel so I don't know it's like again a little bit of validation like that what I'm doing is working and worth it and obviously it's worth it I love volleyball but the, maybe I can keep playing if I can afford to keep doing this. I don't know personally any other player who has was a star in track softball, soccer. She played more sports than I took in classes in high school. I think like the most interesting part about Zana is she had more offers to play in other sports and still chose to, to play volleyball. <laughs> it's day one of the Chicago Championships and Zana is hoping to beat her career best finish of a third place. She and Kelly will have to get comfortable playing together right off the bat in order to get through a tough first round matchup with Corinne Quiggle and Emily Hartong. She makes the semifinal, has an epic semifinal in Atlanta, almost wins it, doesn't get it done. It's probably disappointing, but the fact that she expects to be in the final now, that's sort of what I see from her, right? This confidence that I, I am where I'm supposed to be and I need to make it to that next level. I should be in the finals already. So with so many young players coming up and these, this new college crop of players, it's like, can Zana continue to move up the ladder? There's no reason to think she can't. 
but it is such a cutthroat game, especially on the women's side now. Uh, but that's, you know, that's what we're looking for with Zana. Can she continue to make those moves and continue to get better like she has the last few years? training with Evie, that's her coach. I usually train with Mark Fishman and he's like been mentoring me and training me and I'm like so grateful for him. Um, but because she's the senior here, I said I would just like follow her lead. So I've been with Evie this week and he's been awesome. I think that and we've trained together twice now and the amount of like strategy that I've heard already is like something that's so new to me. Um, like where I should be when, at what time, like the reads on defense, he's like talked to me so much about and I haven't had any coach talk to me so much about my defensive reads and I think it's just like a really great opportunity to learn from like one of the best. So I'm so excited not only to play with Kelly but also to be coached by Evie. I think it's gonna be a fun weekend. After finding their groove in the second and third set, Zana and Kelly look to keep the ball rolling in the round of 16. In a tough three-set battle, Zana and Kelly take down world champion blocker Sarah Pavan and her partner Emily Stockman and have booked their spot in the quarterfinals on Saturday. With tour rookies Taryn and Kristen winning their first round match, they earned another chance to play Olympic gold medalists April and Alex in front of a packed stadium court on a rainy Friday in Chicago. Well, we started off pretty slow. We yep. both sets, 5-2. Yeah. Not, not great. Yeah. Just not a great way to start. Um, but I think both of us were just like, oh, we are not going 21-9 again. Like, that was just kind of in the back of my head. I was just like, uh-uh, that's not happening again. We are better than that. We know how to play. Um, so as soon as we went back to, like, strong serving, serve-receive, side out, I think that's all that was going on in my head. I mean, it was just awesome to play against that level and just to compete and it's, it's fun. I mean, yeah. it was 
You should want to. I mean, Gibbs said it best. Like competing at that level is just nothing is compared to it. We really just tried to up our record performance from uh, <laughs> 14 previous, days ago. Yeah. I mean, 40 to 38, that's just wild. And we had so many opportunities to win that set. Like, we could have taken a set from the team that just won a gold medal, which is just kind of crazy. But I mean, just a fun battle. After breaking their own record for the longest set in women's AVP history in the first set, and dropping the match in a well-contested second set, Taryn and Kristen will look to grind through the contenders bracket on Elimination Saturday. Meanwhile, Jake and Taylor are warming up the crowd in a high-flying outer court matchup against the young team of Evan Corey and Logan Weber. After their first round win, Jake and Taylor have a quick turnaround before battling with young star Miles Pertain and his 2012 indoor Olympian partner, Paul Lawton. matchup that saw great plays on both sides of the net, Jake and Taylor are knocked into the contenders bracket and will have to scrap their way through three matches on Saturday to try and make it to Championship Sunday. After a busy Saturday on the sand, Zana and her family take some time to slow down and enjoy each other's company in one of the few tournaments Zana gets to play this year on American soil. Well, the first year that they played, they were still in the qualifiers. They didn't have any fitness. Except for Hermosa and Manhattan and Hawaii. Yeah. Did you say we don't have faith in you? <laughs> That's not it. We just don't want to be there. Thanks. Which is better? <laughs> See, neither one of those is correct. And then this it's stressful, year, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But my dad watching is like the funniest thing ever. I was like, uh, he like gets so nervous. So we were... I think we were about to lose the second set today, and they went up, they like had set point, and I like walked back and I was just like looking around, and like way yonder on the strand, my dad was like pacing back and forth, and I literally laughed out loud like in the middle of the game. And I don't know, it's just funny. He gets I so try nervous. not to look at you during the match. So he gets you know. so nervous, can't watch. Um, because he's like the, he cries at everything. He's like the most sensitive, little fella. <laughs> Are you crying now? No. <laughs> you are. No, I'm Don't not. Look I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to cry for there. I'm going to my throat. <laughs> People were talking you up today. That was cool. Anybody that we were talking to was like, yeah, she's so fun to watch. She's so athletic. I know. I get that all the time. And I really think it's because I make like, I don't do anything simple. It's like I could just do like the straight like high line shot and instead I gotta like 
boop it right to her and then the play <laughs> keeps going on and on and on and then I have to like keep playing defense forever. And I think if I could just, you know, make it a little more simple, people wouldn't think I'm so entertaining. Yeah. So when lose, I guess. That one girl said you won the bathing suit contest. Yeah, that is the best compliment anybody can ever give me. It's my favorite thing. I take pride in it. She's, she's got really good energy, which is great. You know, Kelly's in general is kind of a quiet person, but like going into this, I'm like, hey, you're now the older girl, like where Emily Stockman was a little bit older than her and they've been together for so long, so their communication was super dialed, like really dialed in and we spent a lot of time, but um, she's taken on that role. But you need two leaders on a team. I guess there'll be one that might do a little bit more and usually that's the older one that has a little bit more experience, but for a young girl, she does have a lot of experience as well. We're gonna have to clean up our setting a little bit. Like we're still, and that's a normal thing. We're not setting each other as well as we probably should on the easy plays. Like the normal pass and sets, we've got to do a little bit better job of that. Our defense has been phenomenal and our serving's been great. So if we can clean up the pass and set, so we're not, we're, we're not struggling so much on like, oh, we're five feet off or eight feet off or super tight, I think we'll be really successful. We got one, yeah, if you win this next one, you're in the semis, which is huge. And a lot of those teams in the semis, we played against a lot. I'm sure Zana has too. Um, but I like our chances for sure. Two matches to go on Stadium Court. Coming up next, Sana Muno, Kelly Kalinske against Sarah Skimmerhorn and Megan Rice. Ten minutes. With a chance to make it straight to the semis on the line, the Pack Chicago crowd is in for a good one. Vibing. Yeah. Me and my folks all good at sunny shining. Tell them my feet kicked up like I ain't trying. This is what I want a summer, yeah Gang's out here, let's run it, yeah Five out here, 100, yeah I've been on game like EA uh, Sip it too soon, that pregame uh, Sign up on two, that three-way uh, I just went fast like we late uh, I just thank God like he said uh, How can I not, yeah, we straight uh, She just tapped in like relay uh, Yeah, it's on me like prepaid uh, If you ain't hip, you adios I just feel lucky that particle Getting that brain like on a roll I have my goals and I double those I just went in, yeah and I ain't look back. I got these wins, yeah. And the vibes on that. I've been vibing with the crew. Ain't no silence, that's the move. If you killing on the vibe, you gon' meet the front of goodbye. I've been vibing. Me and my folks all good at sun is shining. Ay, tell them my feet kicked up like I ain't trying. This is what I want a summer, yeah Gang's out here, let's run it, yeah Five's out here, 100, yeah I've been on game like EA uh, Sip it too soon, that pregame uh, Sign up on two, that three-way uh, Let's go on three again here on Stadium Court She just tapped in like Relay Yeah, it's on me like prepaid If you ain't hip, you adios I just feel lucky that particle Getting that brain like on a roll I have my goals and I double those I just went in, yeah and I ain't look back. And I got these wins, yeah. And the vibes on that. I've been vibing with the crew. Ain't no silence, that's the move. If you killing on the vibe, you gon' meet the front of goodbye. Donna and Kelly have locked up their spot in the semifinals. Hoping to join them on Championship Sunday, Taryn and Kristen have another rematch with Olympians Sponsel and Clays.
Elimination Saturday isn't over quite yet, and overcast or not, the crowd in Chicago came out for a show. With every match now being Jake's potential last match in the sand, he and Taylor's matchup with Olympians and longtime rivals Phil Dahlhauser and Nick Lucena is a match that promises to entertain. This match might have only been for seventh place, but for the sport of volleyball, it means so much more than that. Maybe we should stand really close in front of the camera. Oh, I'm yeah. Jake Giff, this is Phil Dolan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get, get that clear. I mean, for my last tournament, I want people to recognize who I am. Jake Giff, <laughs> Phil Dolan. <laughs> because it. we're bald, but not me. We, look <laughs> we got a bunch of baldists out there and we're pissed. We're, we're, we're done with it. I think uh, what was really truly significant about that last match that we just saw was you had four titans all on the court three of which were from the previous generation one is from the new generation and to see the retirement of one of those athletes is just like it's almost like a, a piece of the soul of beach volleyball has been like removed you know or like buried and put to rest but I'm just like so happy for him that he was able to finish his career. Granted, they still have to play tomorrow, but that he was able to finish his career with a win against Phil Dahlhauser. With Jake and Taylor taking down longtime friends and rivals, Phil and Nick, they've joined Zana, Taryn, and Kristen on Championship Sunday. It's the final day of the 2021 AVP season. Zana and Kelly continue to iron out some wrinkles as they look to knock off Brazilian Olympian Larissa and her partner Lily in the semifinals.
time, think it's mine. I can't take no loss. Yeah, I don't even know what it costs. Huh. I hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah, hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah, I can't take no loss. Yeah, I don't even know what it costs. Yeah, I hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah, hit the ground, then it go off. Yeah, yeah, run it, run it. Ooh, I really feel it's my time, think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time, think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time, think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time, think it's my. Even with the disappointment of her season ending on a loss, Zana's improbable season of three tournaments with three different partners ends with a tough three-set battle in the semifinals. And even though Zana's AVP season is done, she has a flight to catch to get overseas and start chasing international points for the upcoming year. In the other women's semifinal, Taryn and Kristen's rematch with gold medalists April and Alex takes center stage. And despite some incredible plays, the tour rookies end their first season on tour with a third place finish in Chicago. With their only losses from the season coming from the two 2020 USA Olympic teams. Jake and Taylor's Sunday morning matchup is sure to be a good one. Against former NBA standout and slam dunk contest runner-up Chase Budinger and Jake's longtime former partner Casey Patterson.
Chase and Casey taking the second set. It's a race to 15 points that could be the very last set of Jake Gibbs' career. Taylor was looking for someone. He needed that better. 
He needed that death tour. He needed that big brother guy to walk around with not named Trevor, right? Trevor was doing his own thing. Taylor needed to find someone else. And it was Jay Spider Gibb who said, I need the fountain of youth. I'm 40 years old, but I got a lot of game left. And they found each other. And you know what happened from that point on. Team of the year again. Jake has done it over 21 years. Ladies and gentlemen, he has done it for you. I want you on your feet, Chicago. We're going to sit down one last time like he deserves. 21 years going worldwide representing the United States of America. Four-time Olympian. Three times he's been the MVP. Six times worldwide he's been team of the year with four different partners. He's got 34 titles on the MVP. 43 all across the globe. Are you kidding me? I told you this story. You know what his parents used to do when he was a kid, right? He's the youngest of 11 siblings. Did you know that? They would throw it out there. The turkey, the bologna, the salami, the pastrami, and they would compete for the lunch meat on your feet. Every man, woman, and child across the United States of America. One final time. And a bounty for Utah, Jake Spiker. Yes, Jake, that's perfect. Jake, Spiker, Jake, ladies and gentlemen.